Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. A lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together some thoughts arising from Proverbs chapter 26 and the last two verses, 27 and 28. Superficially these verses seem disconnected, one talking about a pit and a stone, another talking about the tongue. But of course, digging a pit and rolling a stone can be metaphorical and related to the words that we speak. And when we put that verse in context, the preceding verses are talking about the lips that are full of deceit, disguising hatred, and the following verse talking about the lying tongue. So it's not unreasonable to apply verse 27 to the same topic and subject area. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. When we think about a physical pit, we deliberately dig a pit and we make sure that we walk around it. Nevertheless, those who dig pits have to be very careful, else they do fall into the pit. It's so easy to be distracted and to forget, even though the pit is there right in front of you. And to fall into a pit can be very dangerous particularly if the walls cave in on top of you and kill you, or it's very deep and you get hurt. And similarly, he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. It takes considerate effort to move a stone. The stone has been settled in its place for quite a long time. It will want to return. You have rolled it out of a hole, but it wants to come back into the hole. The same thing can happen with a vehicle and lots of other things that are heavy and that you move. And unless you actually put a chock under it to stop it rolling back, then it will roll back. Sometimes it will roll back quickly. Sometimes it may delay before it rolls. But gravity has its effect. In both of these situations, wisdom says put a fence around the pit, put a chock under the stone or something that you have moved so that it doesn't come back unexpectedly upon you. These are physical things and we learn from them. But why don't we learn when we apply this to the word of the tongue? Many of the Psalms talk about this very thing. For example, in Psalm 9 we read, The nations have sunk down in the pit which they made, in the net which they hid. Their own foot is caught. Psalm 35 For without cause they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. People tried to entrap David with words, but the traps have backfired upon them. And this is what the proverb is actually saying. If you tell lies, you will be found out, and it will backfire on you. And this is particularly what the Jewish leaders did, the Pharisees, to discredit the Lord Jesus. They posed questions to him, which as far as they were concerned, had no answer, so that they could accuse him, whatever he said. But of course, Jesus was able to answer. He did not fall into their traps and into their snares. David prayed that the words people said against him, to trap him, would in fact be a trap for themselves. That's what happened to the Pharisees. They sent someone to Jesus to say, well, Jesus, what do we do about paying tax? Their debate with the Herodians was that we should pay tax because the Romans rule over us, or no, we belong to God, and we should pay our taxes to God, not to the Romans. And this was a big debate in society. The Herodians saw their power base coming from the authority they got from Rome, They were keen that taxes be paid to Rome because the taxes came back to pay their wages. But then there were some of the Pharisees and particularly the Zealots who wanted independence from Rome and said, no, we should not be paying taxes to Rome. Jesus' response was, show me a denarius with which you pay the tax. 
Whose image is this? It's Caesar Tiberius' image. Well, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. So those who sought to discredit Jesus, either saying he was not a nationalist because he supported Rome, or that he was in rebellion against Rome, ended up with egg on their faces. Because God requires us to pay our taxes, to pay our way in society. He has appointed the governments in every nation, but he also desires that we honour him with all our being. That is just one example of the traps that people laid for the Lord Jesus that they might have grounds to condemn him, a pit that was dug for him, but which the person who dug the pit ended up falling into. When the Pharisees and chief priests sent men to arrest Jesus, the men were in awe of him and came back without Jesus. And when they were asked, why didn't you bring him? Their answer was simply, no one ever spoke as this man. They were just in awe of what Jesus was saying and they couldn't move to arrest him because it was so obviously wrong. And in the crowd that was there, the crowd were hanging on to every word that he said. And to suggest in that context that Jesus had done something wrong was just completely unreasonable. And so they came back without him. Later they would arrest Jesus in the middle of the night where there was no crowd around according to the plan of God, whereby they would condemn Jesus for the sins of the world, that he would die for the sins of the world and be raised again the third day, providing salvation for all men, especially to those who believe. So we're talking about a lying tongue hates those who are crushed by it and a flattering mouth works ruin, which is all related to the fact that he who hates disguises it with his lips and lays up deceit within himself. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. We think immediately of a confidence trickster who comes along and shows great sympathy to a person who needs a little bit of help and ends up offering to do the banking for them, only to abscond with all their money. There was never any genuine love or care. It was all a big lie just to get into the person's bank account. This is a lying tongue and it destroys people's lives. It's easy to say something that discredits somebody, that destroys somebody, either speaking to them directly and crushing their spirit. The saying, sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you is in fact not true. The words that people say can severely hurt a person, destroying their confidence and their spirit, particularly when they are repeated time and time again. And so the proper saying to make is that do not listen to the words that people say when they are criticising you or praising you because they come with a flattering mouth to seek advantage. They come with a lying tongue to seek advantage. And so we must not be influenced to gain favour with those who seem to be gaining favour with us. The heart of man, we're told in Jeremiah, is desperately wicked. Who can know it? It's only through a long association with a person seeing them in lots of circumstances, that you can really know what they are saying. But the stranger who comes up to you with flattering words, he has an agenda, and it is to crush you and to ruin you. The person who comes up speaking kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Jesus enumerated those when he says out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murderers, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it.